Today, we'd like to talk about relationships, those signposts that you have along your path, the things that you recognize. We have to tell you, this is one of your longest signs that you will come across. It'll stretch from the time you are at least a teenager through the rest of your life, perhaps. So you have this thing that we call relationships. It is perhaps the most delightful, the most challenging, and the most uh, <laughs> satisfying of emotions that you can experience. Relationships is packed with emotions, drama, intent, <laughs> and unknowingness of anything that you will experience in this lifetime or any other lifetime. So we would like to start out perhaps with this idea of male and female relationships, this idea of two people coming together with the idea that there is love there for both and perhaps one decides that it needs someone to complete itself, two to make a whole. Is that what you understand? No? So imagine that two people come together and this one or both have these feelings of deep, intimate love. This idea of, of being part of this greater whole. And the idea is that one satisfies or one completes the other. So everything that this one was lacking, the other gives or completes that. What we have to do is to suggest that perhaps there's a little difference there. The reality is that no one completes anyone else. Everybody is completing themselves. The other person that you are so taken with, we suggest is simply a trigger to allow you to experience this love. The reality is that your whole world, everything around you, everything that happens is a reflection back to you about yourself, about your own emotions, about your own uh, dramas, about your own beliefs, your own reality. So things happen for a reason and you get to decide whether it is good, bad, or indifferent. Relationships are one of those things that is hard to ignore. So if you had a male-female relationship, then undoubtedly you have some sense of what we're speaking of. But the point is, it does not take someone else to complete you. You are whole in yourself. You simply have somebody to touch a part of you, touch a button a trigger that allows you to have this sensation of, of fabulous love, fabulous existence, fabulous encounters. And all of a sudden the world changes. Everything becomes brighter and milder and happier. And at least that's what we hope for you. On the other hand, you may find that there is this little green monster that raises its head called jealousy that interferes with that. So you get a full taste of the drama that's there. But recognize you're the one that creates the whole of this. So that is the most uh, dramatic encounter you will have, the relationships. But what are the relationships with your parents? What about children? What about friends? All of that has to do with relationships. They're not quite so intense most of the time, but they can be. So if you have children, then you will recognize that there is a bit of a challenge even there to communicate, to relate certain ideas and certain expectations to them. And they, on the other hand, will expect you to provide certain support, certain ideas, certain gifts that you have. So it would seem that that type of relationship has a little different energy, a little different input, but it is still a facet of this thing that we call love. Now, from that, how about sibling relationships, brother to sister and so on of this nature? Recognize that within that there is a, a, almost a pecking order, a bit of a conflict in that as you grow up. Usually the older one will be the one that is expected to kind of show the way to the others. The second born gets to be a little more interesting because the pressure's not there, but usually there's a second born that creates the more dramatic things in life and achieves the greater things in life. The first one usually is a little bit timid when that intention and there's much more pressure and much more focus upon the first one. The second one is given a little more leeway so it has the ability to create a little different scenario. The third <laughs> gets to be very interesting because usually the third is in a word you would say a slacker in a sense. Now if we have stepped on your toes we apologize for that but we're simply giving you a generality. 
The third born usually takes the life a little easier. It is one that is more likely to uh, do things its own way to not necessarily try to achieve certain things, but simply to go through life and enjoy it. And the fourth, if that is the case, is usually the, the baby of the family. This one is uh, the one that is given everything that you can imagine. Usually by the time the parents have educated or grown, the first three, the fourth one is somewhat uh, a decision to allow this one to develop however it is and to not take things so seriously, simply allow this one to exist as it wishes to. Now notice variations in the birth numbers, first, second, third, or fourth. It is quite dramatic. Now if you have a larger family than that, then there are just variations of this. But usually the baby of the family is the one that gets all of the uh, care, all the support, all the attention without all the pressure to achieve and to be something like that. So we have that type of situation. Now friendships, recognize that friendships are on purpose. They have an intent, they have a support, they have a energy that is all by itself. So when you create a friend or make a friend or find a friend, especially if it's a very close one, recognize that that person is there to mirror image you, to let you see yourself a little more clearly. Someone that is about your same age and your same mentality, if you will, allows you to see a difference there, to really see inside yourself. And recognize that friend or enemy, there is a mirroring back. So if you have something that you find defective or something that is unlikable about this other person. It is really something that you have put a judgment on for whatever reason. It is something that is showing up to see if you can allow yourself to accept that, to, to be loving, to be kind, to be uh, forgiving. And in that process, recognize again that is a, a facet of love. So in reality, what we're talking about with this uh, series is about love. Can you love? Can you forgive? Can you allow someone else to be as they wish to be? Because the great secret within that is if you can do that for someone else, you have done it for yourself. You become a mirror. So the pressure or the situations that you put upon someone else, really you're putting upon yourself. If you can allow someone else to be a little more free, a little more kooky or whatever you decide it is, then you can allow yourself that freedom. You do not pressurize yourself in order to be this certain type of person. You all wear a mask. That mask is who you think you are, who you think people wish to see. So you will be this mask for this one person, this mask for something else. So it is almost as if you have decided this is a person I wish to present to them and while I'll keep a little bit of myself secret, at least that is the, the proposal, the reality is it comes through anyway. So recognize relationships are here and there are signposts that you can see yourself as you go through life. It is a signpost that says how you're doing. So if you wish to know how you are doing on a spiritually evolving basis, sorry, evolving basis at all, recognize that this is the signpost. Step back, see how you're feeling, how your emotions are about the relationships around you and you have a clear picture of yourself. If you do not like it, you have the ability to change overnight, within the wink of an eye, within a desire or an intent. We are Alexander.